Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, sticking around to the end of the day here. We really appreciate that. I will be uh, using some forward-looking statements during the course of the presentation as I update you on Vericell's progress over the past uh, year and a half. The investment highlights starting back in the middle of 2014 are that uh, Vericell has a new management team. I'm the chief scientific officer. We uh, have a, a completely revamped management team, which is outstanding and has a strong track record of developing products in, and commercializing products in the United States. The business has been focused on restructuring Vericell's legacy business, which is uh, products that are involved in the healing of uh, ischemic disease. To focus on our orphan disease program, Ixmylis LT, which I'll describe a little bit further. Uh, in the middle of 2014, we completed the acquisition of the cell therapy and regenerative medicine business from Sanofi. Uh, it's actually a business that I used to work for many years ago, and uh, so I've actually come back home to the, uh, cell th the autologous cell therapy business, but uh, we've really made a great deal of progress, and I'll, I'll be happy to update you on that. Uh, during the past year, the acquisition has been accretive in each quarter if you take out the restructuring, restructuring costs. Uh, we have a, a high potential late stage pipeline with a biologics license application expected to be filed by the end of this year for our third next generation articular cartilage repair known as MACI, matrix assisted cartilage implant. And I'll compare and contrast the advances of MACI over those of our current product which is commercialized which is Cardicel. And, uh, we also have a very strong financial position with the completion of a public offering of about $40 million uh, in the fall of last year. So our product portfolio is composed of two commercialized autologous cell therapies. The first being Epicel, I'm sorry, the first being Cardicel, which is an autologous chondrocyte implant. Uh, that is a product that has sold approximately $35 million in 2000, 30, I'm sorry, $35 million worth of, of sales in uh, 2014. And then Epicel, our cultured epidermal keratinocyte skin graft for uh, permanent coverage of burn patients. Uh, Macy, the matrix assisted cartilage implant, was approved in the uh, EU under the ATMP guidelines. And um, it's the basis of those studies that were done in, in the EU that will be going forward to the uh, FDA for our BLA filing uh, later this year. And then the last product is also a development stage product, which is Ixmylis LT, and that has FDA orphan designation. So Cardicel. Uh, way back in the uh, 1990s, actually when the previous speaker showed that slide of autologous cell therapies back in the 1990s, uh, I was actually there at Genzyme when that was uh, first developed and transferred from technology from Lindahl and Peterson from Sw Sw Sweden. And it's the first, it's still, I mean this is 20, 20 years later, it's the first and only FDA approved autologous cartilage repair product on the market. It has a third therapeutic advantage over other types of technologies that repair articular cartilage defects in that it repairs the defect with true hyaline-like articular cartilage. The STAR study was a clinical study that was done uh, that demonstrated statistically significant and clinic clinically meaningful benefit in reduction in pain and improved function for patients. And as we were talking about cost effectiveness, we actually have durability studies uh, out and it, with data out to 20 years. So this is uh, a product that has shown the test of time and uh, patients that have been treated 20 years ago that are, still have good clinical outcomes. The articular cartilage is removed from a, low, a minor load-bearing area of the articular cartilage. Those cell, the def, I'm sorry, the biopsy is sent to our facility in Cambridge. We enzymatically digest the cells, culture the cells, and then uh, return them to the orthopedic surgeon for implantation underneath a periosteal patch, uh, which the orthopedic surgeon removes from the anterior portion of the tibia. 
The cells are then injected underneath that patch, and then the articular cartilage begins to develop from those cells. Commercial highlights for Cardicel are that the net revenues, as I said, for 2014 were approximately 35 million, and there's a very stable revenue base for continued growth, and we have an extremely dedicated physician base, which is uh, the cartilage repair doctors in the sports medicine facilities. The target patient population is a younger active population of patients that has larger cartilage defects. The typical procedure that is currently used for treating such cartilage defects is a microfracture, and microfracture develops uh, fibrocartilage in the defect, which is essentially scar tissue in the articular cartilage that is biomechanically insufficient and ultimately needs to be uh, repaired once again. So you have these continual procedures going on every couple of years for microfracture, ultimately ending in a total joint replacement somewhere out in the uh, 15 to 20 year time frame. We have excellent reimbursement coverage from uh, payers uh, with many of the large payers uh, being uh, reimbursing for Cardicel. And there is limited competition for ACI and no generic threat. This year, 2015, our highlights are that we realigned all of the Cardicel sales uh, territories and we revised the sales incentive programs that our sales force had in place, which were previously in place with uh, Genzyme Sanofi. And we've gone to an Assess, Confirm, and Treat Act program, which is to reduce the number of biopsies coming in that we process that we ultimately end up not treating a patient. So our ratio was about three to four to one, three to four biopsies for each single treatment. And now we're trying to get that into the range of two to one uh, so that we have uh, a reduction in our cost of goods. One of the other things that we've done is reached out to military uh, establishments and We've actually reinvigorated the uh, military uh, users and also established fellowship programs for uh, orthopedic residents. We've also established important peer-to-peer -peer programs through the uh, speaker peer-to-peer -peer program uh, through the establishment of the Speakers Bureau. So the cartilage market opportunity, you've seen these kinds of slides before, and you know I could say, well, there are 250,000 cartilage procedures, injuries every year. And of those, we, can, we treat about 50,000 of those. But if you look at that little tiny wedge down at the bottom, or actually the little, little red dot, that's ACI. We treat about uh, 11 to 1,300 patients per year with the autologous chondrocyte implantation. And again, this is a very specific niche market that uh, the orthopedic surgeons, the sport medicine docs, are very committed to using this treatment. With our next generation articular cartilage repair um, product, we hope to expand that market and actually make this easier for orthopedic surgeons to apply. The Macy was the first tissue engineered product approved by the ATMP in the EU, and that was in June of 2013. And it offers a therapeutic advantage of being easier to deliver to the defect. And you can see the uh, forceps there holding the articular cartilage implant. That is a collagen membrane that is loaded with the cells. And if you recall from the previous Cardicel slide, that was a cell suspension put under a, a, a periosteal flap. And you can see the uh, implantation procedure, which is quite a bit more simple than the suturing that is done for Cardicel. On the, on the left, you have Cardicel with the periosteal patch and the sutures uh, in place. And many orthopedic surgeons said, you know, I didn't study to be an ophthalmic surgeon, and I really don't like doing this suturing. So we heard them. And uh, Macy is a way of delivering the articular chondrocytes on this membrane. The surgery is far less invasive, and it eliminates the need for the periosteal patch. So the other thing that came out of the summit study in, in the UK, which is the clinical study that was, that was performed for Macy, is that uh, this is an opportunity to be a first-line treatment rather than a second line, as was uh, done for Cardicel after microfracture. This is a summary of the summit study in the EU showing 
clinically significant benefit in pain and function for uh, Macy compared to microfracture. So this is a direct head-to-head -head comparison, 144 patients uh, that were in this randomized study and showing a very nice clinical benefit, which was, was uh, published 2014. And then this year at the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, we also uh, presented data showing that the impact on pain and function here continues out to the three-year time point. The other commercialized product that uh, Varicel has is Epicel. And Epicel is a cultured autologous uh, skin product that uh, we grow skin for burn patients. From a postage stamp size biopsy, we can take a, a small piece of skin and then expand that up and in 21 days produce enough skin to recover a patient's body. It's indicated for burns that are greater than 30% of total body surface area. And uh, there is a small number of dedicated surgeons that are in the burn centers that uh, use Epicel. Again, a nice niche market. But our net revenues for 2014 were 9.3 million or 9.5. And then in the past, it's actually a market that we're continuing to grow and seeing nice, uh, nice expansion. So the current market penetration, very similar to the Cardicel, is a very small, uh, you know, four percent of the burn beds that are that are available, accounting for forty to fifty percent of the Epicel annual sales. And again, these are traumatically burned patients. This is a truly life-saving treatment. Uh, in 2015, we took a price increase to reflect the costs allowed under the humanitarian device exemption guidelines uh, so that we could uh, recoup. Basically, you're not able to make a profit, but you're able to recoup the costs of, of research and development. And that was done. We also increased the sales force from one sales rep to four and uh, reestablishing what had been previously done in Genzyme uh, you know, five to 10 years ago and rest restoring the previous level of promotional support. And that has really helped to take, uh, to have a very positive impact on increasing the use of Epicel. We've also launched that peer-to-peer -peer program to have the important communication between doctors that are using the product and training up the next generation. Ixmile SLT. Uh, is a product that is composed of mesenchymal stem cells, as you hear, heard from uh, Gill and Athersis about MSCs. The other component of, of Ixmylis LT is the type 2 macrophage, which brings in your vascularization and then the anti-inflammatory properties of the MSCs. This is, uh, has gone through a phase 2b tr uh, trial for advanced heart failure due to ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy. And this trial will read out in the beginning, uh, in first quarter of 2016. This, should, uh, this is actually published, so uh, you can take a look at the publication in cardiovascular research, looking at the, this was the phase 2A that gave us the confidence going forward with the phase 2B trial, which was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that's registration quality, 100 patient, 108 patients, and again, this will read out in early 2016. So turning to the financials, the revenue growth for Varicel is quite strong. Early on, you can see uh, Q2 2015, quarter to quarter, there's a 31% increase in the year-to-date total for half the year is a 17% increase in our revenues, which is quite strong. Uh, we're in a, a, a great financial position after raising funds from uh, very s nice, strong, fundamental healthcare investors. And we feel that there are several value-creating commercial and clinical milestones that will be coming in the next upcoming quarters. U.S. commercial operations with Epicel and Cardicel sales, and then also with the clin clinical and regulatory programs, the filing of the BLA for Macy by the end of this year and then the filing of an HDE supplement for a pediatric indication for Epicel. And uh, the, the, excuse me, Excel DCM trial will uh, read out in the first part of next year. So with that, I thank you for your attention.